Oh my gosh. All right. All right. You ready? Yeah. Who out there is ready to cook some steak? There, that's easier. All right. We're just cutting. Oh, this is what I made, and I'm making some more things. I'm cutting up some potatoes. What are you making, Freddie? Soup. soup. Man, you're always making soup. Right? Always making soup. Hey guys, what's going on? So, for Easter week, I thought we would do some recipes that I'm making the new soup. You can have for dinner or you can have for breakfast and uh as per the request last week, we're going to make dessert too and uh it's a perfect Easter brunch dessert cuz it's kind of it's not too sweet. But um Today what we're going to do is we're going to teach you guys how to cook steak in a cast iron pan. Um, steak is one of those things that can be intimidating for people. Uh, it can be scary to cook at home, but it doesn't need to be. And it's one of our favorite, absolute favorite uh, dinners. Uh, it happens to be super nice out if you're in Portland here. And um, one of our favorite ways to we eat. We don't know if uh, it's nice anymore. That's true, we don't. If you're in Hawaii, I'm going to guess it's nice. Mm -hmm. Because it's always hot. And yeah. Palm Springs. Palm Springs too. If you're watching in Palm Springs and it's cold, <laughs> I'm sorry. Um, so, in the summertime, I think our favorite thing to do is eat a nice steak with a huge salad of fresh tomatoes, cucumbers, radishes, arugula, blue cheese dressing. But we're not quite there. So, uh, my beautiful wife, Mrs. Rucker uh, at Ruck Luck stumbled upon this wonderful potato recipe and this will be our third time eating it in about a week or two. So the steak is great. I'm going to teach you how to make béarnaise, which is a derivative of a hollandaise sauce. So you'll have uh, the skills to make a hollandaise sauce for your Easter brunch. And then these potatoes, which were served with steak, um, are one of the most epically amazing um, breakfast potatoes. So let's go ahead and start with the reduction. Don't cut your sister. What's that? Oh, he's trying to cut her. Oh. So we're going to start with the reduction to make the Bernays and Hollandaise is one of the mother sauces in cooking. There's five mother sauces, tomato, Espanol, Hollandaise, Velouté, uh -oh, and Bechamel. Um, so this, I use dried tarragon, I think it packs the most punch. I think the recipe calls for two tablespoons. I'm going to put about two tablespoons in there. White vinegar. So we're just going to add this reduction at the end of making our hollandaise. So if you're making like eggs benedict or something that's breakfasty and you don't want it to have that, then you just follow this recipe and you leave that out and you've got a breakfast dish. So we're having a breakfast dinner. So just a refresher here on if you're mincing shallots. I peeled these, I cut them in half. I'm keeping, I kept the root end on, I, some slices. So that was about, you know, depends on the size of the shallot. A couple of horizontal, some vertical. No, no, stay out of there, man. Get your hands out of there, man. Um, somebody wants to know if you learned to cook on the job or if you went to culinary school. Uh, on the job. Actually, that's I did go. I took a year of culinary classes at the Santa Rosa Junior College. And then he taught cooking class for some people too. But uh, I dropped out of that, and I. Uh, and we got to be at his desk. I got offered a job at the Silverado Country Club in Napa, where I was from. So I left home for a year, Santa Rosa, not that far away. Did you want to go to And then ended up getting a job. Okay, so the shallots, you guys get, you guys have your own stuff to cook here, okay? We've got our shallots, our vinegar, and our tarragon. And we're just gonna put this over in the heat. Somebody said Espanol sauce, is that what you said? Yeah, it's like a um, demi-gloss essentially. 
So this is just going to get reduced down to essentially nothing. I'm going to add some black pepper to it. I think that's in the recipe. And then the next thing is we're going to start Mrs. Rucker's Rip and Taters. Tater tops. Um, and I kind of got those going a little ahead of time. I'll post a picture of what the sheet tray looked like before it went in the oven. But this, I have a mandolin here, fairly thick. And you want to be careful. This is if you really want to be uniform. Okay. Sorry, somebody's giving me instructions on typing in what we're making, which is steak and potatoes. What, why are we? Because people want to know what we're making. Oh, we're making steak and potatoes. And the recipe is in the link right below on my homepage. Okay. Okay, so the potatoes are sliced a, about, I said the thickness of two quarters stacked on top of each other. If you have a mandolin, great. If not, just you can take your time. It doesn't have to be perfect. It's okay if, if this is not perfect, okay? So once again, you can even take this knife and do that to it. So through the magic of cooking and TV, what I've done is roasted these for about 30 minutes, tossed with a little drip bit of rosemary and salt. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to get my pan. This is a this is a two pan dish, cast iron pan uh, dish here. You don't have to use cast iron if you don't have two pans. You definitely want cast iron for the steak. But I'm going to add a good amount of oil in the back here. These potatoes take a little bit to crisp up. So we've got a nice little film of oil here. And I'm going to use a spatula throughout the cooking process here. But I'm just going to go ahead and put these potatoes. And the trick here to a good solid potato that doesn't stick and the flavor is a good amount of, uh, of cooking oil. That's like 20 times more annoying than chef for you. <laughs> All right. So I got my potatoes in. This is fairly high heat. They've been roasted. This pan was not super hot, but it will get there, okay? I've got this vinegar reduction cooking here. Small pot, little black pepper, the dried tarragon. You can use fresh if that's what you have around. Like I said, I like dried because I think the flavor is a little bit more concentrated and it makes me feel like the traditional sauces I've eaten in the past. Um, I did realize just steak, potatoes, and sauce, we were... Close that cabinet. We were a little bit uh, kind of shorthanded on what would make a rounded out dinner. So there's not a recipe for this up because it's a little bit of a, hey, Geez, Chef Freddy is on one tonight. Mm -hmm. Good thing Chef Babette's holding down the floor making dinner. Anyways, I realized we were a little bit light on dinner and having a rounded meal. Uh, so I decided I was gonna kinda amp it up. This isn't on the, on, uh, the recipe, but I'm making um, some green beans. And if you're anything like our family, um, it's really, really hard to get your kids to eat all the stuff you cook. And we have a super hard time getting them to eat their SpaghettiOs. No, so, Dad, what, we love SpaghettiOs. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna make girl. green beans cooked in bacon, finished with SpaghettiOs as a fun kid's side dish uh, to kind of round things out. So a little bit of butter, a little bit of bacon. A little bit of garlic and we'll stew that for just a second green beans are one of those great things they're kind of like calamari they're either really great cooked super slow or super super fast okay so that is all the way reduced there's not you can see it might steam up there's not a lot of liquid that's great that's good for our sauce 
We've got our potatoes going. They've already been seasoned a little bit with uh, the rosemary that I cut from the garden and a little bit of salt. I'm gonna go ahead and just give them a little bit more potatoes. Take a good amount, but let's salt in stages so we don't over salt. Somebody's wondering where your Daisy Dukes are because they would look better with your outfit. You know, I thought about it. I did think about it, but you know, you can't pull you can't pull all your all, all your uh, all your tricks out of the bag at once, right? <laughs> Just wait until we do our fish tacos in a speedo. Mm -hmm. Okay, so I got my bacon going in the back here. I'm gonna go ahead and turn this pan on. I'm not gonna get turned on all the way, but I want it to be nice and hot, okay? You want it to be nice and, and hot. And now, in the recipe that I wrote, I realized not everybody has Jacobson's steak seasoning. Uh, so I just wrote it, steak is a completely fine, just seasoned with salt. If you like a little bit of pepper, that's great. But because we have it in the house, I'm gonna go ahead and use a little bit of this. Uh, if you can get like this Jacobson's brand or the Montreal, Montreal steak seasoning, that's great. Uh, it just adds a little bit of flavor, a little extra. Uh, let's quickly talk about steaks. These are New York's. I also love ribeyes. Um, if you live here in Portland, my absolute favorite place to get steak is at QFC. Uh, before we moved to Milwaukee, we lived in, Milwaukee, in uh, Montevilla, and there was a QFC store that was on about 50th and Burnside. There's also one in Selwood. They have the most amazing, juicy, thick cut steaks, and they're like 10 or 12 bucks a pound, which is a steal. Um, it's not grass fed, it's corn fed, it's got great marbling, and it's kind of, you know, it won't break, break the bank, but it's my favorite go-to cook at home steak. So that's your, that's your insider's tip, is to go to QFC. Uh, these steaks, however, are New York's that my lovely wife bought from Costco. Can my mommy used to live at um, New York? New okay. York? No, I never lived in New York. So we have some stuff going. We're multitasking here. Let's make that sauce. We'll keep it kind of lukewarm so that when we have our steaks, we're all this is all going to come together at the right time. I need... I'm going to use this little tiny kitchen aid. Three egg yolks. Three. I'm not saving the whites because I don't have a use for them. If I do, then I save them, but. Please, Dad, can I do one egg? You know. <laughs> People want to know if I went to Costco in my dinosaur costume. No, I did not. I just wear, because uh, I'm a welder, I have a couple of um, N95 masks, so I wear that and gloves when I go. But so, I've thought about going in my dinosaur costume, except that my peripheral vision's not good and I tend to knock things over. Okay, so I'm gonna get my butter ripping hot. I've got three egg yolks. The juice of a lemon. Can I ask the juice of a lemon? So when it comes to cooking steak at home in cast iron, um, any steak that you like will do. Somebody asked me a question about lamb. Lamb will work, sure. I love, I, but when it comes to flavor, I don't think that grass-fed is my favorite. It's gonna be leaner. When I'm trying to eat healthier diet, I like the grass-fed steak, but look for, I go for a New York or a ribeye, because if I'm cooking steak, it's usually kind of a special Hey, let's have steak for dinner moment. It's not a like, hey, what are, let's, what are we gonna just feed the kids and eat a healthy dinner? Um, so if I'm going for it, I'm gonna go for it. I like something that's a little bit thick, so I have some time to cook it. And I'm not gonna crowd the pan. So for me, for our family, 
two of these steaks is gonna do the trick. It's gonna feed us all. Uh, I have four out because we're making dinner for our neighbors tonight because they're such nice people. And they, uh, uh, she works at the ICU unit. Uh, so we wanted to provide them a nice steak dinner. I can walk it over. Yep. Um, so you can see the potatoes are starting to brown up a little bit. What are your thoughts on Denver cut? Yeah, I like that's how I like my uh, venison. I use the Denver leg of venison. Okay, so you see these uh, this bacon garlic actions getting kind of warm here. I'm putting these green beans in. We're going for the kind of the more the slow cook on the green beans here. So bacon. How high is your heat going to be for those? Good question. I don't think about that often, but I'm going to turn it down a little bit. Okay. I'm going to turn it down just a little bit. Your butter's sizzling you over here. You want that butter real hot. Um, could you use a Vitamix to blend all this stuff up? For what? For It says, would a Vitamix blender work for making the sauce? For the hollandaise? Yeah, it will. For okay. sure. All right. Oh, this butter's getting everywhere, Gabe. Oh, Mrs. Rucker's got her special splatter pan. It looks like, oh, it's catching on fire. Oh my God. It's almost hot enough. You might want to open a window, honey. I'm going to, oh yeah. Sorry ah, guys. that butter. It's exploding. The potatoes, that's olive oil that we're cooking those in. Okay. And the butter, we don't really have a preferred brand. I love that Irish gold butter. This is uh, called creme classique, which is a European style butter. I don't know why that's watering so bad. Maybe there's water in there? So we're gonna turn it on. And slowly pour it in. Chefing up. I'm trying to get the potatoes like burnt. 